Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to start uh, with the care coordination uh, in uh, Health Cloud. So care coordination is very important. Um, <clears throat> now, you must be wondering, what is care coordination, right? And what does that term even mean? So think about in a very simple way, uh, care coordination, when you think about care coordination, you can think about uh, organization of patient care across uh, multiple health care providers. Now, you must be thinking, hmm, that definition is very um, superficial or how do I say? It's not really helpful, right? It, it just don't explain um, the real purpose of the care coordination, right? Um, so uh, let me put it in a very simple way. When doctors, right, and other health care provider uh, work together and share information, uh, uh, related to uh, patient needs and preferences. Um, they are uh, uh, communicated at the right time to the right people. So so let's say you, you work with a doctor and so you're, let's say a patient named, say, you know, James Brown, right, decides to uh, go and treat uh a kidney problem, right, to do with the kidney stones. So the care provider uh, comes in the picture. So care provider uh, responsibility to ensure uh, proper care for uh, James Brown. So uh, care provider works with the doctor. So when the doctor and the, the care provider works together, right, so all the patient information uh, will be made available so that they can provide the right care uh, to the patient. Okay. Uh, so... Um, and not only to provide uh, information about the pa patient, but to keep uh, the data safe at the same time. So that can be done using Health Cloud. Right now, what this will do is that this will help uh, to keep patient healthier longer and better manage chronic conditions and experience care that is consistent with their goals. Obviously, you know, you can't um, uh, provide a care which it's not consistent with the goals, right? Um, so uh, now one thing you have to understand that when doctors and other healthcare providers don't communicate effectively with each other treatment prescribed by different doctors for, say, patients, different health issues, it might conflict or become unmanageable for the patient, right? Uh, the patient is most likely to get unnecessarily, you know, test, which is very annoying at the same time, right? Uh, and the patient is more, uh, you know, patients more likely to get frustrated as well. Um, so when care needs to be coordinated, right, there are different points of contact in which care might need to be coordinated, which can include follow-up care after, say, emergency hospital visit or care between a patient's primary care provider and multiple specialists for chronic health conditions like kidney stone or, I mean, I don't know if it's, if I really call kidney stone as a chronic condition, uh, but let's say for the sake of argument, right, please don't, uh, uh, you know, hammer me for this saying, hey, this is not a chronic uh, health condition. I'm not a doctor, but I just, I'm just telling from, um, from a general experience, like some people uh, get constant kidney stones uh, due to the lifestyle or whatever, right? I just don't want to get into it. Um and then, uh, so yeah, um, so now how do the patient, uh, how do the provider coordinate patient care? That's one thing um, you must be wondering, right? Uh, using EHR records, but that is electronic health records, uh, which is an important term you will constantly hear. So doctors can use the same platform, in this case, the, the, uh, the health cloud for the electronic health records so that each provider can see and update the patient medical history and communicate with the patient through, uh, you know, th through the right means using the health cloud. So, so that's one of the um, um, example of it. But if you wanted to, I'll give you one example I found from internet. So I just read about this example a long time ago. So uh, how does a coordinator care works? Okay, let's say James, for instance, right? Or or let's say, you know, 
uh, Marianne, right, who is, say, uh, 80 year old, uh, goes to hospital emergency department after feeling chest pain and shortness of breath. Uh, a doctor looks at her and orders tests and diagnostic and diagnose her with a uh, with a heart attack, which is unfortunate, right? The doctor puts a note, right? Um, like the, her test results and newly prescribed medications are entered uh, into her electronic health records, and and an alert is automatically sent to her primary care doctor. Like usually in New Zealand, we have GP, general practitioner. So, um, so she's also referred to a cardiologist who accessed uh, her health record during her appointment to review her previous test result and add new information about uh, her condition and care plan. Uh, so now after the cardiologist appointment, uh, her primary care physician examines the medical record like the GP and checks it with her to see how she's doing. <coughs> Excuse me. So all this information can be accessed from a one location. Um, so that's the advantage of health cloud, I would say, right? Now, since you're talking about, uh, you know, the care coordination and uh, so one thing I just wanted to show you that, you know, the, the customer needs to be, a patient needs to be onboarded. So usually in this case, we're going to use person account. Um, so what that means is that if the person needs to be onboarded, uh, it will be sitting in a lead uh, place. So that lead needs to be converted to um, a patient. And when the lead is converted to patient, uh, the patient is assigned with the care provider. So that's a first step of entering the per uh, person into the system. Okay. So, so the, uh, so I hope this is clear because I, I, I feel that it's important you guys to understand the basic uh, context around care coordination. That's the reason why I gave you this example. Um, so let's get started, right? So I have registered for the org, and now what I'll do, I will go here. Come on, and I will type something called, let's say, Health Cloud. Uh, excuse me, UM. And what I'll do, I will pick up a lead. So let's go to the lead. And I'll close it. I'll close it. Yeah. And what I'll do, I will um, pick and choose all the open leads. And let's choose this one, right? And what I'll do, I will convert this to a patient. Okay. Now, convert to a patient. Now, when you try to convert to a patient, if you look for uh, any kind of duplicate uh, du uh, record. If it does, then it will warn you, right? So it's, it's a better way to ensure that your system uh, don't have any sort of duplicate data. Um, so once that's done, you can click on next. Now you need to assign a care provider. Obviously, your you know patient needs to have. So let's you know randomly assign. Let's say I want to assign Linda Brown, a cardiologist, to this per person, and that's the Becky Alexander, the name of the person, the patient name, and I converted this person to a patient. Okay. Now, it will take you to Lee's page where you can continue working. So, Becky Alexander has been converted. Now, if you search for Becky Alexander, so Becky Alexander, uh, you can see the account, right? I'll have to, I'll just go for account. And so, you go to Becky Alexander here. And so you can see that it's converted. And so this is the information about, um, uh, so this is a case. Uh, so if you look at the case, so you can see that the person um, has a care plan, right? The case record is a care plan. And the case owner is Linda Brown, who's a cardiologist. 
uh, subject medium new so this is just the basic stuff and you can do all kind of stuff here um, so if I go to um, just need a better view, I guess. What I do, I'll close it. Um, just gonna go to Health Cloud Admin. So the the main uh, thing I wanted to demonstrate today is to convert uh, a lead to a patient, right? But you know someone arrived and you wanted to onboard that person right so we just did an onboarding person uh, onboarding process so this is you know very simple as you can see using health cloud so we have make alexander here now this is the information so oh yeah so you can see the details of becky oh yeah don't worry about this ugly stuff here right i just added yesterday if you remember and these are the details, so you can see there's no information here. Um, we just converted, that's all we did. There's not much here. Um, all these things are empty, that's fine. Uh, but that's just a one step I just wanted to show. Um, there are a lot of things we're gonna talk about, it, right? <clears throat> because it's important to know um, and to understand how things works, right? So we're gonna take slowly uh, so that you guys understand. So today, like I said, we um, understood uh, the concept of care coordination. And so, like I said, um, if you wanted to know what is a care coordination, it's an organization of patient care uh, across multiple healthcare providers. That's in a simple uh, nutshell what the care coordination is all about, right? Uh, so care coordination is important when you wanted to follow care, let's say, and after a person visits an emergency hospital visit, maybe like I give an example of the of the person, she had a heart attack, so and she has a visit uh, emergency uh, department in a hospital uh, because of a, a heart issue, and then uh, care uh, coordination is important when the care between the uh, patient's primary care provider um, uh, and multiple specialists it needs to be synchronized, right? So when more than one care provider is involved, like, you know, for instance, you went to cardiologist and cardiologist update the information uh, in her uh, health record. And that health record can be accessed by GP. Uh, and then, uh, you know, she can be looked after from there. Um, so, yeah, so that's one of the thing, uh, one of the reasons why care coordination is important. So, yeah, uh, that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode. So, that being said, hope you guys have an amazing Monday. Adios.